Over the past 13 years, the Rooster Road Trip has taken us across the country in search of incredible publicly accessible upland landscapes. And although crew members come and go, and some of the cornerstone bird dogs have unfortunately moved on, the spirit of this annual endeavor remains true. Our goal throughout this entire series is simple, and that's to highlight the fact that public land birds can be had by anyone who's willing to put in the work. It may not always be easy, but it will always be worth it. That much we can guarantee. And although we're staying true to our roots, this year comes with a twist as we expand our focus beyond just pheasant and aim to slide a variety of game birds into our vests. And what better place to search for a mixed bag than Montana? Starting day one, a stone's throw away from Canada, we found ourselves checking into a property enrolled in Montana's Block Management Program. Formerly started in 1985, Block Management is a cooperative program between private landowners and the Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, and it provides the public with free hunting access to private land. And as recently as two years ago, approximately 1,200 landowners had enrolled more than 7 million acres of land that's open to you me, and anyone else willing to participate in a legal, ethical, and courteous way. Now, how did we arrive at this particular property out of the thousand plus to choose from? Well, we had an ace up our sleeves by the name of Hunter Van Donsel. Hunter is a Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever farm bill biologist turned Montana and Wyoming state coordinator who has helped spearhead a project coined Hydration for Migration and he wanted to shed some light on how helping Montana's ranchers and big game populations in the northern reaches of the state also benefits upland birds. And we were more than happy to give him the opportunity to show off his hard work. You'll see this draw coming up on our, kind of on our left, and we'll straddle that when we get there. Bunch of sharp tail sign in this, right on the edge of this coulee. After coming to terms with the fact we'd be going over, under, and around a lot of fences today, it didn't take long for the group to get into our first birds of the road trip. Good boy. Good boy. Is he birdie or did we just stumble yeah, into that? Yeah, he was birdie. Oh, that's great. Just proving that labs can be Sharpie dogs. Oh, yeah. Nice shot, man. Awesome. Bring your bud. Look at that gorgeous bird. Montana sharp tailed grouse. Doesn't get better than that. I don't know. Luckily, both Hunter and Logan's shots connected, and our first sharp tailed grouse are in hand. And with that, our vision of Montana mixed bags was off to a great start. Nice shot. You know, I think Pheasants Forever should stand for Pronghorn Forever. That's what I think. You know, you've spent a of time running the line instead of out in front hunting. Let's be honest. Hunter hinted at the fact that we should move a few cubbies around this enormous property. But it was clear that this biologist with a penchant for Pronghorn was sandbagging. Gotta be more. Yeah, there's probably more in there. Safety. No, this has been fantastic. I mean, we've probably put eyes on close to a hundred birds at this point. Yeah. And it's not like really exaggerating. Yeah. And I'm just happy that they're not getting up like any more wild than they are. Yeah. Because I figured they'd be pretty spooky and be able to spot us a mile away. I don't. Nobody. Nobody hunts birds up here. So don't. So don't blow my spot up. Too bad. <laughs> Good thing there's a lot of block management zones for people to get lost in. Yeah, I mean, 80,000 acres of just this place, and then, I mean, it, it just goes like this for for miles over, you know, six counties. So. Taking an entire season just to figure this place out. I know. It's pretty exciting. It's almost like you need to add another dog to your brace. I might. <laughs> I might have to. <laughs> What's the body count out there? I think five is it? Yeah. 
Oh, weird. My dog is the exact opposite place I could be. Get a bird dog, they said. It'd be so rewarding, they said. It'll add an element to your life that you, know, you never knew you were even missing, they said. Got him! That's a retrieve to be proud of. Check out that sharp tail. I think I ran up the hill as fast as my dog did. <laughs> oh, you found a shed too? Mule deer sheds and sharp tail. Just don't fall on that thing. Good boy. Give. Good. Is that boy. you? Yeah. Nice shot, man. Long poke, but got it done and worked. Pretty cool to see him chase him down on the ground. Always push him all the way to the edge, right? Yeah. Hiding in this little bit of silver sage and made it happen. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of like this project is keeping this right side up and like it is, you know, compared to really no habitat other than some food but plenty of food out there too. Visionary in scope, back in 2018, Pheasants Forever wanted to take advantage of a strong interest in improving critical big game winter range and migration corridors, while also creating a unique way to bolster grassland conservation. Research showed that places where high value habitat connectivity took place or could be created were also some of the areas at greatest risk. So the answer was simple. Anchor this corridor with wildlife friendly fences and high quality uninterrupted grasslands. And ultimately, with an army of federal, state, and NGO partners and seven private landowners, an area roughly 30 miles long and seven miles wide has seen miles of friendly fences created, more than 29,000 acres of grasslands enrolled in long-term protection agreements, and nearly 85,000 acres of grazing management plans created. In turn, this has immensely improved an important pronghorn migration corridor, enhanced sharp tail grouse habitat, protected sharp tail and sage grouse leks, bolstered mule deer wintering grounds, and helped nesting habitat for waterfowl. But clearly, we were here for the grouse. Even if the two Montana locals with waterfowl tags and steel shot in their pockets, wanted to add an unexpected addition to our tally for the day. With a green winged teal and a handful of sharpies in tow, we moved on to another block management property where we hardly had time to load up before we put eyes on birds. This would serve as an omen for things to come, as both Hungarian partridge and sharpies were soon flushing all across the landscape. That's a 
limit. That a boy. He puts those right out of there. What? Coming at you! thought one of the most important genetic connectivity corridors for pronghorn could have such a profound impact on upland birds. Pheasants Forever and our partners did. Landowners listened and this landscape is better because of it. <laughs>